This is the first because the big night is going to be in November when we take back our country. The media was against us. They were writing our obituary months ago. They even called the election before people even got a chance to vote. I can safely say tonight, Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. And earlier tonight, I called Donald Trump to tell him that I congratulated him on his victory. And now, going forward, he will have my full endorsement for the presidency. And I think we're going to do the right thing for this country. Pretty telling responses, but you never know. It is the night there was one loser, well, one winner, I'm sorry, and a whole bunch of losers. Somebody who's very much not a loser, who knows a lot more about this stuff than I do, Megyn Kelly, joining me now, the great journalist, host of The Megyn Kelly Show, which I love. You can watch it, listen to it, Sirius XM Triumph Channel 111. It's also on YouTube, youtube.com slash Megyn Kelly. Okay, Megyn, Vivek drops out. Nikki Haley somehow calls it a two-person race after finishing third. DeSantis is mad at the media, and Trump's talking about November. What's the Megyn Kelly take? Uh, all of that is irrelevant other than Trump. It's over. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. With all due respect, I, yes, there's like the, you know, slim little chance somebody could pull a rabbit out of a hat, but realistically, it's done. Trump crushed in Iowa. Trump, he's going to probably win New Hampshire. He, it's feasible that he could lose to Nikki Haley, where she has devoted all of her time and resources. Um, but he's already crushing her in South Carolina, her home state, which comes right after that. And he's already not only crushing in the ballots that come on Super Tuesday in March, but he's actually kind of rigged it legally a lot of those um, elections such that it's going to be almost impossible for somebody else to win just with the party rules. So Trump's in a great position going into March. These three states here are kind of interesting, but they're actually not. If somebody else wins, it's not going to stop Trump. I really kind of think I agree with those Republicans who are online right now saying can we just focus the money and the resources behind Trump right now? Because we're going to need every dollar we have because half our money is going to go to his legal defense fund. And Joe Biden is the best funded candidate in you know generations. So I'm not sure exactly why the Republican Party needs to keep playing this out. But I guess it's just that's the way the election ball rolls. Megan, I... I had a talk last night. I have a bunch of Trump friends, a bunch of DeSantis friends. And I don't have any Nikki Haley friends. Anyway, but I have a bunch of friends in both camps. And one of my DeSantis-loving friends was despondent last night. We were texting back and forth. And he was crushed about this whole thing. Jesse, what did we do wrong? Do you think we did anything wrong? And I'll tell you, Megan, I'll put this out there. And I know you'll argue with me if I'm wrong because you don't care about that. And I love that. Is this, is this something DeSantis could have ever won anyway? I told him, listen, you can't fight the ocean. You can't fight the tides. Donald Trump's already the former president, already popular. He's being indicted. The indictments essentially cinched it for him. If you had run the best campaign in history, and maybe you did, it wouldn't have mattered because you can't fight the ocean. Was I wrong? No, you're not wrong. It, this is like, let's say they're you know, having a contest to see who, who is going to get this $10 million house for free. We, we need, you know, a, a saucy, blonde woman. And I'm like, I'm saucy and I'm blonde and I would love a $10 million house. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to put on my bathing suit. I'm going to get my hair did. I'm going to do my hair, my, my makeup, I'm try to look my best. And I saunter out on the runway. I'm like, I'm getting myself a $10 million house. I'm, I'm in great shape right now. Boom. Out comes Elle McPherson with blonde highlights. I'm effed. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Life's not fair. <laughs> it's just Trump is Elle McPherson. Ron DeSantis is extremely talented and extremely smart and would be an excellent leader, but he is not a walking ball of charisma. And Trump is, for all of his faults, he is. And so while the, the true Ron DeSantis would have been enough, would have been more than enough in any previous election cycle to go up against Trump, you're gonna need something close to another walking ball of charisma, not to mention the celebrity factor which Trump had before he became president and has exponentially since becoming president. It just was an impossibly difficult task. It wasn't particularly well executed in DeSantis's case, but even had he executed it perfectly, I think we'd be looking at the same result right now. Megan, let's talk Nikki Haley for a second. I have a few sources. You're an actual journalist, so you have a whole bunch more than I do. And I am 
hearing things that I don't love. You see, I'm going to vote for the GOP nominee, unless, of course, Nikki Haley is anywhere on that ticket. And I keep hearing things about Nikki Haley being on a Trump ticket. Explain that. Have you heard this? And why in the world would he do it? Well, I understand why he'd do it, so I'll take that next. But um, here's what I heard. So Jason Miller, who works for Trump, I'm trying to pull up the text so I can just read it to you. Jason Miller apparently gave an interview to the New York Post. He works very closely with Trump. He was the guy we dealt with when I interviewed Trump. He's this sort of lead man on this stuff. Uh, And they were asked about who might be Trump's vice presidential pick. And the quote is, pretty safe to say it won't be Vivek, okay? Miller, reading from the Post, asked about the possibility of another GOP presidential contender, Nikki Haley, um, said he would let Trump speak about his decision. So he wasn't as explicit in shooting down that possibility as he was about Vivek. I'll make two arguments. People like Tucker have said, not only would he not support that ticket, but he would actively campaign against it. Trump's got to be considering that because he does, he, he follows Tucker. He's given him many interviews. He won't like that pushback. But Trump also wants to win and needs to win this election. He, a, a Republican must win the election, and it looks like Trump's going to be the nominee. So Trump must win this election. And so the vice presidential choice just got a lot more important. And if Nikki Haley can help him win, he might actually choose her because he's banking on people like you and Tucker eventually coming into the fold. When push comes to shove, you're not gonna vote for Joe Biden. And you're probably not gonna stay home when you realize Trump could go to prison if you do. And we're gonna get another four years of Biden and Kamala. And we all know it's probably gonna be Kamala because Biden probably can't make it five years. He's ba- he could be banking on that. If he doesn't win, Jesse, he's going to prison. He can't pull back the DOJ off of that January 6th prosecution. Can't pull him back off of the Mar-a-Lago prosecution. He doesn't really need to worry so much about the state prosecution in New York. He's not going to jail for that one. The one down in Georgia is bad, but is having massive problems as Fannie Willis embarrasses herself, crosses ethical lines, and may now be get, getting <laughs> criminally prosecuted herself. So he's got. if he can pull back those two federal ones, he's in good stead, and that means he needs to win. So you could see the argument that if she puts him in the best position to get those moderates and Dems who don't like him and never Trumpers who don't like him, maybe he has to just suck it up and go there. Okay, Megan, so whip me here. Does she help him? I I know she doesn't help him with me. It disgusts me, the thought of her being anywhere close to power in this country. She's openly hostile to the things that I value in life. But I'm one person. I'm not not important. Does she help him win? Yeah, yeah. I see. I hear everything you just said fully. Um, She does. I mean, just yesterday she couldn't say whether a man can become a woman. So she's disappointed a lot of us on our favorite issues. You know, whether it's she's too hawkish, she's too in bed with the billionaires, or she doesn't understand the difference between a man and a woman and whether you can stay and will and must stay one. However, the moderates like her. They like the, the GOP's big Achilles heel for the past couple of years since Roe was overturned has been abortion. And she's saying closer to the right things for on that issue for moderates, for liberals, for centrist people who are uh, upset with the Democrats, who have had it with wokeism, Joe Biden's stance on Israel, whatever. They're, they're playing footsie with the right now and considering coming over. I know a lot of these people in New York. They're Democrats, but they can't stand Joe Biden anymore. They can't stand the left. They're starting to watch Fox News and more alternative right-wing media. So they would consider, they would consider, and Trump, you know, he's far less conservative, as you know, than Ron DeSantis. So even Trump is like, all right, I consider it, but he's kind of like out there and he says a lot of things I don't like. I'm not sure about, yeah. They look at her and they think, ah, uh, okay. Maybe we'd have a world after Trump where like a woman could be president and somebody who's more like I am with the oh. moderation and blah, blah, blah. I know you don't like it, but if you can get those people voting, you know, Republican, I, I can see the calculation, not advocating for it. I actually think it's gonna be somebody else, but I can see it. Is there a Megyn Kelly call on who you think this is gonna be? Sorry to put you on the spot, but whatever. I do have an idea. Um, I don't have inside knowledge, but I do have an idea. I'm not going to say it yet, but I, it's a woman and she's young and she's in politics. Okay. 
Oh, dang. All right, now I'm curious. I bet everyone is. Well, I guess you better go watch the Megyn Kelly show, everybody, and listen to the Megyn Kelly show and find out whenever she reveals it. Megyn, you are the best. I appreciate you very much.